Hello and welcome to What's in the Night Sky for March 2022. I'm Hayley and this month I'm going to talk to you about the dance of the morning planets, why the moon always shows us the same face and the constellation of Leo the Lion which signals the beginning of spring. Let's begin by talking about the planet Venus. So Venus is a beautiful morning planet at the moment definitely worth getting up for you can see here we are on the 1st of March and I'm looking towards the southeast and I'm about quarter to five in the morning and I'm just going to show you how Venus rises just before five o'clock in the morning at the beginning of March so it's still quite dark so it's a really good time to go and have a look at Venus if you do have a small telescope you can have a go at checking out Venus's phase and um, an interesting thing happens this month because Venus uh, moves from a crescent phase to a gibbous phase and that should happen sometime around the 21st of the month so a little project for you this month if you are an early riser and if you have a small telescope that you can use is to track the phase of Venus over the month and see if you can determine when you think it passes over that 50% illuminated uh, phase into a gibbous phase and if I just move the time on you can see that beginning to happen and here we are around the 21st and it appears to be around about half illuminated and then as we pass through the month you can see that the gibbous phase is coming in you can also see that it's getting really light in the morning so as we pass through the month you'll need to observe a little bit earlier and there we go into April I'm just going to zoom out now and take us back to the beginning of March and you can see that at the beginning of March once Venus has risen if you wait a little bit longer you'll also be able to see Mars as well so Venus and Mars make a really nice pairing in the morning um, at the beginning of the month as the month goes on, you'll need to get up earlier um, to be able to see them while it's still dark because the mornings are getting lighter and we've also got the clocks changing towards the end of the month as well. Um, if we go to around the middle of the month onwards, so I'm just going to pick the 15th, you can see everything is much brighter now, so I'm going to take us a bit earlier. You'll see that Saturn comes to join as well. Um, and Saturn is much, much trickier than Venus and Mars because it rises later, its uh, rising time is closer to this time of sunrise, um, so it's a tricky customer to see. But if you attempt it to, in the second half of the month, then um, you might get lucky, especially if you've got a nice flat horizon um, to deal with as well. And the planets do sort of a little dance as the um, month goes on, um, getting closer and closer to each other until around the 23rd when they make their closest approach and you can see it's getting too light again now so I'm just going to take us back in time so you can see we're now um, just after five o'clock in the morning the three planets forming a nice triangle together really close together um, around the middle of the month so their closest approach will be around the 23rd so if you can get up just after five o'clock around the 23rd and you have a nice clear sky, you may be able to see these three spectacular planets together um, just above the horizon. And if we go to the 28th, 27th in fact, um, you can see that the crescent moon is coming to join as well. Um, and let's just have a look where the moon is on the 28th. There we go. So a little bit later on the 28th, um, by this point, you might be struggling with Mars and Saturn because it's getting nice and light, but you'll be able to see Venus and the crescent moon. Um, so the 27th and the 28th, you can see the moon along with those as well. Let's stay with the moon now and let's take a look at the full moon, which occurs on the 18th of March. And we'll go into the evening sky to see that. So here we are with the full moon. And you can see the 
familiar shapes on the moon that we if you've been watching these videos for a while we talk about some of them every month um so the familiar uh, seas and craters that you can spot with your naked eye i thought this month i'd say a little bit about why we always see this same face of the moon we don't see the far side of the moon at all from um from earth apart from a, a tiny bit due to the liberation of the moon so um, the reason for that is that the moon rotates once on its axes every 27.3 days. So that is one lunar day. So one day for us is 24 hours, one day on the moon, um, one rotation on its axes is 27.3 days. The amount of time it takes the um, moon to orbit the Earth once is also 27.3 days. Um, and that means we only see one face of the moon when ever we go out to look at it um, and we say that the moon is tidily locked to the earth. Um, the reason for that is when the moon was formed it was spinning much faster um, and it had a tidal bulge that was caused by the earth's gravity like a rocky tidal bulge um, and that acted as a break which slowed down the spin of the moon until it matched its orbital period um, and that's why those two figures are the same and that's why we only see one face of the moon. Let's take a look at our constellation of the month now which is Leo the Lion and I always like to talk about Leo the Lion um, in March because um, when we reach a point in the year when Leo is in a really good position to observe, that usually means that um, the spring is coming. So it's a nice signal of the beginning of spring. And the way to spot Leo the lion, um, and it's it's not a difficult constellation to spot. Um, the asterism of the sickle is really um, prominent and easy. So hopefully you won't have too many problems finding it if you can find a clear night. Um, the easiest way to locate it is to find the Big Dipper. We like to use the Big Dipper as a pointer because it's the um, probably the most easily recognisable shape in the night sky. So find the Big Dipper. And we've talked before about using these two stars in the Big Dipper as a pointer to get to the pole star, Polaris. If you go the other way instead, it will take you to the constellation of Leo the Lion. And if we put the art on... So you can see Leo de depicted as a lion. Um, it's one of the oldest constellations. Um, the Babylonians referred to uh, Leo's brightest star, Regulus. Um, there's Regulus. Um, as the star that stands on the lion's breast. And Regulus is often said to symbolise the heart of the lion. So you can um, look out for Leo and see if you can spot the sickle. Um, asterism. See if you can spot the bright star Regulus, the heart of the lion. And um, Regulus is actually a four star system. So it's got two pairs of stars um, within the system. And in Greek mythology, Leo was the uh, Nimean lion, uh, and seemingly indestructible lion until he was finally beaten by Hercules in one of his 12 labours. As we usually do, we'll finish by having a look at the ISS. So let's take that constellation art off again. Uh, so there, I'll show you two ISS passes that will be good this month, um, hopefully will be good this month, um, one in the morning and one in the evening. Um, so the first one is on the 1st of March, and that will begin at around 6.03 in the morning. So if you are an early riser, this is the one for you. Um, so you are looking to the west for the ISS to appear. Okay, so speeding up time a little bit. And there it goes. Um, so with these ISS passes, the ISS will appear nice and bright in the night sky and it will take five or six minutes to um, traverse across the sky and, and set again. Um, so you've got a little while to um, to get out there and see if you can spot it. The other one is in the evening on the 24th of March. Let's just stop that. 24th of March, uh, 8.17 is the time you are looking for. 8.17, and there we go, we can see it already. Um, so if I speed up time again, 
um, you can just see how the ISS tracks across the sky. And this is a really nice one because it goes right through Taurus. Um, and Taurus is a fantastic constellation to observe anyway. You can have a look for the Pleiades while you're out there looking for the ISS. And it also goes right next to Leo as well, um, which is our constellation of the month. So that brings me to the end of our night sky tour for March 2022. And I'll be back next month.